When designing a subdivision, parcels are often defined by requirements that dictate the minimum allowable size of each lot. Using these requirements, a designer can maximize the number of lots in the subdivision while ensuring each lot represents a usable solution. To manually define lots can be a time-consuming process. Fortunately, Civil 3D provides specialized layout tools that make it easy to create lots that meet almost any sizing criteria. Let's take a look. On my screen, I have some geometry that represents the beginnings of a subdivision. Basically, we're picking up where we left off in the last session. Quickly, I'm going to come over to the Prospector tab, and I'll expand the Sites category. The Subdivision Site is what I'm using for these parcels. Let me expand that site, and then I'll expand the Parcels category. And in here, we can see the 10 parcels that I've defined so far. At this point in the workflow, I'd like to start creating the individual lots. Now, my lots have to conform to the requirements of my municipality. Not a problem. I'll have Civil 3D create the lots for me. I'll do that by coming up to the Create Design panel, and I'll open the Parcels menu, and I'll choose Parcel Creation Tools. Right here is where I can define my parcel sizing criteria. I have a setting for the minimum lot area, minimum lot frontage. Is that frontage going to be measured in an offset? If so, what is that offset? One of the nice things about these settings is if you select them, you'll see where the property is measured down here in the preview below. I'm going to populate these values with my desired settings. For instance, I'd like to have a minimum lot area of 10,000 square feet. The minimum lot frontage will be 50 feet. I do not want that measured at an offset, so this 15-foot measurement isn't going to come into play. Minimum lot width, we'll make that 50. Minimum lot depth, I'll make that 100. Do I want to establish a maximum depth? No, so this 500 isn't going to come into play. What if I have more than one solution? Well, do I want to go with the shortest frontage or the smallest area? I'm going to choose shortest frontage for right now. Let's turn the automatic mode off, and I'm ready to create some lots. I can do that by opening this creation menu. There are three choices, slide line create, swing line create, and free form create. Slide line is the most popular option. Just for a second, let me explain how it works. Civil 3D is going to establish a property line. We'll, we'll assume I'm creating lots around this bend here. It's going to create a property line that it's going to slide along this right away. As the property line is slid along the right away geometry, in its wake, it will create lots that conform to these properties. Let's try it. I'll launch the command. And then in the Create Parcels dialog box, I'm going to use the same settings that I used for these other parcels. They'll be in the subdivision site. They're using the single family parcel style and the parcel number plus area label style. I'll click OK. And now I can just follow the command line. It says select parcel to be subdivided. I'd like to subdivide this parcel. I'll do that by selecting the area label. Now I can define the frontage. This is the geometry where the property line will be slid along. I have a running object snap of endpoint, so let me grab the endpoint here, and then I'll move my cursor around, and I'll select the endpoint down here. As you move your cursor, on occasion this will go the wrong direction, not a problem. Just move your cursor back to the beginning, and then pull away again. Let me click this endpoint to establish my frontage. Now I need to establish the angle of my sliding property line. If I press enter, that property line will be perpendicular to the right of way. This is the most popular option. Note if I come down to the command line, I can also establish that property line using a bearing or an azimuth. I'm just going to press enter. You can see my first lot is created. Let me click yes to accept the result. I can also press enter. The next lot is created. Let me press enter. I'll press enter again. Note that we can't pan or zoom right now. That's all right. We'll take a look at these lots in just a second. It is important to note that as these lots are created, I can change these values. For instance, maybe I'd like to create a lot that is 20 feet wide for the purpose of an overflow easement. All I have to do is come over and change these values. Let's make the minimum lot area 1,000 feet, and then I'll change the frontage to 20 and the minimum width to 20. Now I have a 20 foot wide lot. Let me click yes to accept that, and now each subsequent lot is based on these measurements. Let's change these back. We'll go back to a 10,000 square foot lot, 50 foot frontage, 50 foot width. Perfect. Let me click yes. I'm going to hit enter and we'll add a few more of these. We'll go around the bend with it. 
And when I get about that far, I'll hit the escape key a couple times to get out of the command. Let's take a quick look. I'm going to zoom in. You can see I've got 10,000 square foot lots until we get down to, in my case, lot number 14. This is the one that should measure 20 feet wide. Let's check that. I'll go to analyze and I'll click the distance command. I'll choose one endpoint and then the other. There's 20 feet. Let me hit escape. So we're back to 10,000 square foot lots until we get to the bend and you can see the area increases. That's because the lot frontage is controlling the sizing of these lots until we get around the bend and then we go back to 10,000 square feet. Let's back up. I'd like to add some more lots through here. We'll look at another option. I'll go back to home. I'll open the parcel menu and I'll choose parcel creation options. I'm going to use my previous requirements. This time though, I'm going to come down and turn the automatic mode on. Rather than asking me, do you accept this lot? Do you accept this lot? Just go ahead and put them all in. Note that when we are creating automatic lots, there could be a remainder. I use this menu to determine what I want to do with that remaining area. Do I want to divide it up amongst all the lots? Do I want to place that remainder in the last parcel that I create? Or do I want to create a separate parcel from the remainder? I'm going to choose redistribute remainder. Once again, I'll open the create menu and I'll choose slide line create. I'll click OK to accept the styles. I would like to subdivide this lot on the end. Then I'll establish my frontage. I'll start at the beginning of the last lot we made and I'll take this down to the end. And then I'll press enter to accept the 90 degree lot line. Accept result, yes. When I'm finished, I'll press escape a couple times and you can see that all of these lots are the same size because that remainder was redistributed amongst all of them. Let's pan this over down to the southwest corner. Let's say I'd like to create a park down here and I'd like that park to have an area of exactly two acres. Let's also say this line over to the west represents an existing property line. I'd like my park property corner to match this iron. So basically I'd like to draw a property line from this end point over to the right of way and I'd like the area to measure two acres. Now I don't know where to draw that line to. So in this case, rather than creating a sliding property line, I'm establishing one of the endpoints and I'm swinging that property line along the right of way to find the appropriate area. Let's look at the swing line option. Once again, I'll open the parcel menu and I'll choose parcel creation tools. For my minimum area, I'd like to enter two acres. Fortunately, I don't have to enter that using square feet. I'm going to type two acres with no space between the number and the text. When I press enter, there's the square footage. Now this is big enough, it's gonna override all of these values, so I don't have to worry about the others. Let me open the create menu and I'll choose swing line create. I'll choose okay to accept the styles. I would like to subdivide this parcel and then I'll define my frontage. We'll start at the end point here and then I'll move my cursor around all the way up to the top. Hand this back down. Now, where is my swing point? Well, where's the first corner of that property line? I would like it to match up to the end point here. When I click, we're getting a no solution found. That's all right. The reason that's happening, I left my automatic mode on. Let me turn this off. Now that that's off, we can see it, it established the property line for me, except the result, yes. Now it's saying no solution found because there's not enough space to create another one. So let me hit exit and I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. In the event you're creating a parcel and it fails, chances are it's either not large enough to put that parcel in there or your automatic mode is getting in the way. When I zoom in, I can see that that parcel was created exactly 87,120 square feet. Much easier to use this option than to try and create this property line manually. Let's pan this over and we'll look at one more tool. I'll open the parcel menu and I'll choose parcel creation tools. I'm going to change the square footage here back to something a little smaller. We'll go back to 10,000 square feet and I'll open the menu and I'll choose Freeform Create. I will then click OK. With Freeform Create, really I'm creating a property line that is perpendicular from a selected property line. As I move around, you can see what's happening here. So maybe I'd like to put a property line right around here. I'm being mindful of my running object snap. So I'll establish that point by clicking right here. And then now it needs to know what angle. By default, it'll be perpendicular. If I hit enter, that's what I get. Note I can also assign that property line using a bearing or azimuth. I'm just going to hit enter. There we go. I can now come off of that one perpendicular or any other one. Let me click to put another one in here. I'll press enter. 
and then I'll press escape a couple times when I'm finished. So these were kind of sized manually. As you create your parcels, if you'd like to take these away, you can always come up and launch the erase command. The trick is don't erase the label, erase the lot geometry. I'll take those two lines out, I'll press enter, and it'll be as though they never existed. So when it comes to Civil 3D's parcel layout tools, we've looked at slide line, swing line, and free form. Slide line is probably the tool you'll use most often for subdivision creation. The swing line and freeform tools are great to bring out for special occasions. Now that we've looked at these tools in context, see if you can use them to predictably size some additional parcels in this subdivision.